hi, uh, my name is Abbas, and yes, I'm from Egypt, as you can see. And um, I moved to G Germany three years ago um, to study. Uh, before I was a software engineer working in, in Egypt, and then moved to do my master's degree in Germany, and then I stayed, and now I work as a technical product owner, which is software engineer plus meetings uh, at uh, Smava, if you know Smava. So I have a different experience to share with you, and as Ahmed said, um, in Egypt we had a revolution, and this is a very famous picture from uh, Egypt, 2011. And since then, Egypt is not the same. People are not the same. And also, I, I'm not the same since then. Um, this is the first time we had this feeling that we belong to somewhere. That we maybe we can do something. Maybe we can change something. And at that moment, me and many people started to do things. Maybe we can change something in the country. And I did crazy stuff. So I'm here to talk about some of those crazy stuff. Uh, some of them succeeded, some failed. Uh, yeah. One of the things that succeeded, uh, that, that project, it's called Zabattak. Uh, we created that just after the revolution. It means I caught you. And we created that to, to help restore the security and report uh, crime and uh, corruption using digital maps, using mobile phones, using SMSs, us, using any kind of technology. And that was a great success for us. We have so many uh, small stories. We cooperated with all level of the government to the prime minister. We had also cooperated with uh, many companies, including Google, Microsoft, Nokia at that time. Uh, we got awarded uh, many local and international awards, especially from the UN. Uh, that was three years ago. But uh, now it's not working because it's illegal. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it was fun. Oh, yeah. And then we had also another project, another interesting project. Uh, yeah, it's called El Dam El Masri, which means the Egyptian blood. We created that um, at some point of time. We had like a small civil war in Egypt. So we wanted to count number of killed, injured, uh, harassed people. And yeah, we ran uh, that project for three months. And guess what? It failed. Nobody was interested to know the numbers. Nobody was interested to share even the, the news. But it was interesting. Uh, we invested a lot in the visuals. As you can see, it's just one page. But was the, it was a good e learning experience. And then we had the most interesting uh, moment in the Egyptian modern history. It's the elections. We had the first free elections ever. And by free, I mean that we had the feeling that uh, <laughs> yeah, our votes will make a difference. At, at that moment, it, it was a big deal. So I had a discussion with a friend, and he had this idea that maybe we can create something that measures the performance of the next president. And I said, yeah, maybe we can just uh, see all the promises that the president makes and then see what he achieves. Sounds easy, right? And then, uh, yeah, one of the candidates won the elections, and the result was announced at 6 p.m. And we decided to do it. Okay, let's do it. By 8 p.m. Uh, was online, and we started to work until midnight. And at 2 a.m., we published something. We published this. Uh, the president uh, who won, uh, his name was Mosi. So we created a Mosi meter. And luckily, uh, Dr. Mosi said that he will do 64 items in his first 100 days. So I said, OK, easy. Listing all the items that he said he will do, a counter, counting down 100 days, 
and yeah, that was it. One single page, HTML, just one photo, done, published, 2 a.m. in the morning, the same day. And we thought, okay, everybody's asleep now, we can rest, tomorrow we can talk about this. And then by four, I mean, between two and four, we had some people talking about the project online. Uh, yeah, we saw some interaction. By six, the website was down. Yeah, the website was down more than up in that day. We had millions, not millions, like thousands of visits. People wanted to know what is this about. And I, wake, I, I woke up at six and I found this. I had to fix it and then I went to work very late, as you can imagine, and my boss called me. Yeah. Usually I don't go late, so it was a big deal. So he called me in his office and he told me, hey, do you know about this website? Yeah. Uh, at that moment of time, the website was all over the country. Everybody was talking about that locally, nationally, internationally. Everybody was crazy about this website. I guess people had this feeling that maybe we can measure, maybe we can, what, um, measure the performance of the president, maybe we can um, like feel the upper hand on the highest authority in the country. So people had this feeling with, with this website. And as you can see, it's very simple, just the listing of things and yeah. Very simple, one page, HTML, no fancy code, nothing. And we had so many stories. I mean, it, it, not, it was not only on, online. I had a friend who, who told me that he was in a taxi, and the guy in the taxi told him that, can you check the, the Mosi meter? I want to know what Mosi is doing right now. And I remember also that when we published something that's in progress or it's done, and I watch my colleagues at work, like they get SMS and they go get notifications and they check the website, it's going crazy once we update the website. We were able to keep the people engaged for the first 100 days. And that was really powerful. And of course we had some challenges. We had some uh, clones. A very famous uh, news website wanted to clone us, but they failed. And we had some interesting theories that who did that? And yeah, it, is it CIA? Is it foreign intelligence? Who, who have the power to do the same thing at the same night? And I wish it was true. I would give the same presentation in Honolulu or something, not, <laughs> not in Germany. Yeah, but I mean, it was intense. And we were able to keep the public engaged. And that was really powerful. And that was also dangerous. Until. <laughs> yeah. Until I got a call, this call. And yeah, we have a saying in Egypt that if you receive a call from uh, a private number or something like this, you will go behind the sun. And, <laughs> if, uh, and if you wonder, that's bad. That's, that's very bad, okay? I don't want to, to know what's happening over there. So yes, we had, I had this call, and for a moment I had a flashback with all the bad things I did in my life. And <laughs> I answered the phone, and it was the president office. Hey, we like what you do, we think it's important, you are fair, and we want to cooperate. I said, why not? <laughs> and they said, OK, we, first we want to change the promises. I said, no. <laughs> no? No, you can't, because people voted for you. I voted for those promises. If you have problem with those promises, that's your problem. That's not my problem. And then they said, OK, we will give you exclusive information. I said, no, we don't need exclusive information. We need public information. If you want to help us, send us the information that you send to the public. And yes, since then, they reported to us. 
every two weeks they send information to us. And that's a big deal, that, that's huge. I mean, some people, five people, yeah, online created the website, dummy website, were able to force the president and his team to report to them. Uh, come on, I'm talking about the Middle East. That's impossible, okay? It was a big deal. And yeah, uh, we did that for the 100 days. That was really intense. Um, I had a team of five. Yeah, software engineer, graphic designers. Um, not full time, I mean, we, we all had jobs, but we did this as uh, after job, yeah, part time. We had a lawyer that gave us free advice. Uh, she was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we decided that's enough, 100 days. Uh, we cannot do that anymore. It was intense, and we are like normal people. We are not like specialists in this. We did a small success story, so let's keep it like this. It's better than having a long failed story. Maybe others will pick up this and do something else. We did it. Let's finish that. We published the, the report of the 100 days and it was done. Uh, after that, we noticed something that we call the Mosi meter effect. People started to use this meter to measure, measure things to make fun of politics. So you can see that, yeah, measuring stuff and making fun, making jokes, and also on TV, a newspaper, so that was really nice to see. And we also had a song. <laughs> Someone made a song, and it's called, guess what? Mosimeter. Yeah, uh, maybe I can play. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's in Arabic, but it's interesting, OK? I hope it's working. <laughs> ميتيوم ايد الضحكو علينا يا سفينة وعطلت في المينا وقفة بتتصلح وحزينة واحنا البحارة يا سفينة مقطعلك مش قد الدفة كتكوت في اخوات بيتدفة That's, that's the link if you want to listen to that. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, that was interesting to see. Yeah, and, but the project was uh, finished, but it was not dead. Uh, we noticed that some other people wanted to do the same concept, so we helped other people to do it, uh, especially in Tunisia. You know, it, the revolution was working over there. So. <laughs> It was easy. Uh, yes, we did one for India. It failed, and it's funny that the, the president, president of India had like 999 some, something promises. That, that was crazy. Uh, yes, we also tried to help people in Germany, by the way, Austria. But y you really have a complex political system. I, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't understand it. Uh, yes, and... We also inspired other people to do it. Uh, Canada, Iran, or Sama. Yeah, you have it for Iran, by the way, and it's really successful. Uh, yeah, so we inspired other people. That's good to see. Uh, hopefully someone else, we will do something for Egypt. We, we have elections coming soon, so if it <laughs> happens. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it and you see me again, then it's working. Okay. <laughs> and then this takes me to the question that um, did we really need a revolution to create something that makes a difference? Um, I mean, you can see that other didn't have revolution and they picked the, the idea and just started to work on that. Maybe, yes, we didn't need a revolution. Maybe. No, we needed one, but for sure that um, once you, if you are able to uh, get the attention of people for a very long time, that's really very powerful. And with that, you can change a lot of things. 
Thank you. <laughs> questions. I know some questions. I mean, I know the questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right here, very much for that. Sure. Um, what would you do different if you would start right now in the same situation? Okay, that's scary. Um, I mean, the political atmosphere in Egypt is not the same as before. Uh, when we had the revolution, we had the freedom to do anything. Now it's intense, uh, and it's really difficult to do anything online. Uh, so that's why I'm hoping that next elections, maybe someone will have the time and the effort to do something. Maybe us, maybe someone else. I know that the last election, the one um, after the revolution, just the one after after the revolution, <laughs> someone tried to do something. And I don't know where is he right now. So <laughs> yeah, maybe behind the sun. Uh, that was a great talk. Uh, I wanted to ask if you are informed with the concept of blockchain, like cryptography in general. There's, go, yeah, please, sorry. Um, I mean, I see it everywhere, so. Okay, so the reason I'm asking is because there's a coin they're creating now called Augur, and the whole point of this coin is to decentralize voting and predictions, uh, so to the point that you can decentralize democracies again. So instead of tampering with elections and voting and presidential elections, you get the whole world to vote for someone, uh, on a ledger, like in, in the in the blockchain, no one can control, no one can tamper with. Um, with this this is kind of the revolution, I think that you are mentioning. Maybe the next step of the revolution to the point where people uh, will vote and will have a say for everything and can't be controlled by anyone. Yeah, that's really interesting, and I can tell you that as Ahmed said, we have a lot of opportunities, and you cannot do that everywhere, but you can do it in in the Middle East. We can experiment with many things. So that's one idea. Yes, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that it was very hard to adjust the system to the German government or the German election. Was it more like a like a systematic issue, or was it just complicated to get people interested in that? Uh, the point behind Mosi Media that you you point to the highest level and you say, "Hey, you didn't finish your homework." That's the point. That you make it personal. That you failed. You succeeded. And in Germany, it's different because it's like a group of people, like parties, they, they work together to achieve many things, so it's not one person. So yeah, that's that was the problem. Maybe there's another way to do it. But in the Middle East, that's the way it works. What about the American beta? <laughs> American beta. Yeah, that was the name, but uh, nah, it didn't work. Any more questions? Perfect. Thank you.